Hello everybody, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to you to Forest and Sandridge Primary School, the place where your child will be spending their next uh, seven years of their education and having a wonderful time at the same time. Uh, my name is Anna Wilcox, I'm the head teacher here uh, and I have been here in this role for 15 years. Um, things are very different now than they have, they have been over the last 15 years with our move from a smaller school up on the hill but we're still very much the same school as we always have been uh, a Christian school with strong Christian foundations and uh, with very much a family feel and, our, and a child-centered approach to everything that we do at the moment obviously we're going through another great period of change uh, because of the coronavirus uh, this has been a really challenging time for us as a school as it has been in schools across the country um, but we hope that this um, welcome video, which normally we would have invited you into school for, will give you some information and some insight into what your child will be experiencing over their first year at school. Uh, and we do hope that children will be able to return as normal in September and that our new reception children will be able to start uh, as normal. Um, but we haven't had confirmation of this yet, so we will keep you well informed. So we're just going to take you through uh, the slides that we would have done if you were here for um, a meeting with us. The first thing I want to talk to you about is our vision. Our, the vision of our school is very important to us. It's what we're always aiming, aiming towards, what we want to achieve for the children. You can see it up here on the screen now and basically what it's saying is that we want to provide the very very best that we can in all areas for our children um, within a safe secure Christian environment um, we have a, a motto if you like or a strap line that is nurture grow flourish which you will have you will have seen at the beginning of this video a little bit of explanation about but those three words encapsulate our vision statement which you can read on the screen there with that goes some core values so we have four core values at our school there are lots of other values that we explore during the year that we help instill into children so that we hope that when they leave our school they have got these as a set of uh, set of uh, moral and Christian values um, through which to live their lives the four core values are courage compassion respect and humility uh, and the children will learn an awful lot about those from the moment that they start school and you'll be very interested I'm sure um, I'm very surprised at how uh, proficiently and how quickly your children get used to this different terminology you'll start hearing them talk about those values very soon after they start school in September this is what the staffing will look like in the early years Mrs Roberts uh, is our early years lead. Um, if your child has been in seedlings, you will know her as the early years teacher. She oversees everything in the early years. And there are two class teachers, uh, Miss Lucy Gale and Miss Amy Dibbon. Uh, Miss Gale teaches apple class, Miss Dibbon will be teaching cherry class. And they are supported by three teaching assistants, Mrs Jackson, Miss Bryant and Miss Davis. Um, they are the same staff that have been in the early years this year. Um, so you may have come across them but they're all experienced staff um, and fantastic at what they do um, and their their sole aim will be to help your child to have uh, a most wonderful early years um, year next year uh, and to help them to feel safe and secure and to make progress uh, in all areas during the year um, we also have our leadership team which consists of me as head teacher, and then we have Helen Barswood, our deputy head, James Mead is our assistant head, and Helen Chapel, who is our Senko. And all of them uh, will be introducing themselves to you as part of this video, so you'll meet them in inverted commas in a little while. Homeschool communication is very important to us at school. It's really important that you feel that you're well communicated with, you have the information that you need on a daily basis. 
and we want you to communicate with us as well if things have um, things are tricky at home or if you've got a question about learning we want you to be able to feel free to ask us about that we have um, something called dojo which is an app um, which all parents are asked to sign up to and that is a method of communicating directly with your class teacher normally this is set up in September but you will be receiving emails to ask you to set this up quite soon um, the reason for that is we won't have normal correspondence with you at the moment because of partial school closure and we want you to be able to ask the questions that you ordinarily might have done uh, in this meeting via that medium so your class teachers will be in touch with you soon in order to help you get that set up uh, we also have an open door policy and want you to feel free to be able to come in and talk to um, any of us when you need to obviously there are times in the day when we might not be available but dojo is a good way of uh, dropping a note to say please could i have some time to meet up with you we will make sure that you have that time Our school day uh, looks like this. Children can come onto school site from 8.40 in the morning. Uh, school starts officially at 8.50, so we have a period of 10 minutes to come in in the morning. Um, initially, you can bring your children to the classrooms, but quite soon we'll be asking you to drop them off so that they can develop independence in this way. Um, then they have a, a lunch break at between 12 and 1 and then they finish school at 3.15 in the afternoon with various sessions and an act of worship each day uh, during the day. When your child starts school, those, those times will be staggered and they will come in gradually. It's quite a quick process, but we've tried lots of different ways um, of managing this um, and the way that we organise it uh, has worked the most effectively. So some, uh, all children will start with just mornings and then gradually they will stay for lunch and then gradually they will extend to stay in for the whole day but you will be sent more information about when your child will start um, very soon. Each year we have three opportunities, uh, formal opportunities for you to come and meet with your class teacher. Um, we encourage you to, to make an appointment at each one of these, these times but particularly the ones in the autumn and the spring terms where your teacher will spend some time talking about how your child has settled in, uh, anything that they're doing particularly well in, and also any areas that we would like you to support them with at home that they might be struggling with or finding challenging. Um, so the first one of those will be in November, uh, all being well with the virus. Um, and we will invite you into school where we will where teachers will meet you individually in the hall and there'll be a sign up service for this so that you can book a 10 minute slot with your teacher again as i've already said don't wait till then if you've got an issue if an issue comes up or something you're concerned about you're not sure about please contact your class teacher ahead of that please don't feel that you've got to wait until that meeting School uniform. Um, our school uniform is bottle green. We have our school logo um, embroidered on, on the uniform. And as well as that, children can wear grey or black trousers, shorts or skirts or dresses. Um, uh, if they wear trousers or shorts, they need to be tailored shorts or trousers. And they wear black school shoes and a white polo shirt. We do have white polo shirts available with the logo on, but you don't have to have those if you don't want to. They can be bought quite cheaply, plain white polo shirts in the supermarkets uh, in packs if you would rather do that. We also have coats and fleeces available, um, uh, PE bags and book folders. All of this is available at uh, Sportsbug, which is on the high pavement in uh, on Melksham High Street. Um, don't leave it too late to order your uniform because there can be a bit of a rush and then it can take some time to order it. Um, but if you pop down there when it's convenient and then you can put in your order for your uniform. The only logoed uniform that we ask you to have please is the school jumper or cardigan if you prefer. So if you're able to get one of those then uh, that would be great. We would also like you to have a, a book folder 
you can get those with the logo very cheaply down at sports bug as well um your child will also need to have a pe kit with them uh, and in the pe kit they have they need to have black or plain pe type shorts uh, a pair of daps sports daps and a colored t-shirt now you can get a plain colored t-shirt or you can get one again from Sportsburg. that will either be red yellow blue or green depending on the house team that your child is put into uh, that information will be put on the letter that you will receive about when your child is starting school and how they're having their phase returns you'll find out what house they're in then if you've already got a child in school then your child uh, who's going to reception will be put in the same house so you will already know uh, what color their t-shirt needs to be uh, so we have four houses ashdown which is red savanac which is blue epping which is yellow and sherwood which is green so the children will have uh, a t-shirt which corresponds with their team colour. Hello, I'm Helen Wellsworth, the Deputy Head Teacher at Forest and Sandridge School. I'm delighted to be able to introduce myself to you uh, today on this video. I'm really looking forward to meeting you and the children in September. I'm going to talk to you now about safeguarding. Um, at Forest and Sandridge School. Safeguarding is of paramount importance to all members of staff at Forest and Sandridge as we care so deeply for the children's safety and well-being and we do all that we can to ensure that they are protected, feel safe and secure so that they can nurture, grow and flourish during their time at Forest and Sandridge. We're really lucky at Forest and Sandridge that we have a safeguarding team of four which includes myself as DSL uh, Anna Wilcox, our head teacher, James Mead, our assistant head teacher, and Helen Chapel as Senko. And we all work really closely with the other members of staff to ensure the children are protected and safeguarded. Safeguarding ranges from a whole wide range of aspects of school life, from health and safety, site security, online safety, bullying, and recognising the risks that children may be exposed to outside of school. As a school, we give children the opportunity to learn online safety in class, which is age appropriate, depending on um, all aspects of online safety and how to protect the children when they are using technology. We also ensure that children through PSHE feel secure and safe so that at any point if they wanted to talk to a member of staff about anything that was worrying them in school or outside of school, they feel comfortable and secure to be able to do this. All members of staff receive regular safeguarding training from office staff, teachers, teaching assistants and our MDSAs, we are all able to recognise risks and signals and indicators that may mean that a child is at risk of harm. It's our duty then to follow our safeguarding policies and procedures and follow this up. It is not our responsibility to decide whether a child has been harmed. We just follow due policy and procedure. If you'd like to know more about our safeguarding policy, then you are welcome to have a look at this, which can be found on our school website. If you at any point as a parent have a concern about um, an, a child, then you would, we would welcome you to come into school and share that with us so that we can ensure that we can support that child in the necessary way. I'm going to talk to you now about site security. Um, we're really lucky at Forest and Sandridge that we have got a brand new purpose built building and with this comes the additional advantage of having modern site security to ensure the children are kept safe throughout the day. All visitors um, that visit site are asked to report to the main reception and that is the only way to gain entry into school. At the school office um, appropriate ID um, will be asked if if necessary and we follow our trust policies and procedures in signing in and working with visitors and volunteers to the site. We also follow GDPR guidelines. 
if at any point you want to collect your child earlier than the school at the, before the end of the school day then you would need to go to school the school office to be able to do this during the day the gates are open from 8:40 to 8:50 to welcome the children into school at 8:50 our back gate and our side entrances are closed the entrance at the front of the school remains open so our seedlings children can come to the setting. They arrive at 9 o'clock and once they have arrived the gate is then locked and secured. During the time from 8.50 to 9 o'clock there is a different gate that separates our apple and cherry class and our seedlings preschool to ensure that the children in apple and cherry are kept safe and they all remain in the classroom during this short period of time. At the end of the day, the gates are open at 10 past three in preparation for parents collecting their children at 3.15. We're incredibly lucky that our site is so secure and each classroom has its own classroom door, which ensures that all children will only be able to go outside when an adult goes with them. Hello, I'm James Mead, the Assistant Head Teacher at Forest and Sandridge, and it's a pleasure to be able to introduce myself to you today. I cannot wait to meet you all face to face in September as we get to know you and your children. I'm going to talk to you now about the Pupil Premium Grant. The Pupil Premium Grant is additional funding that schools receive under current government regulations. The Pupil Premium Grant is funding provided to schools to help all pupils reach their full potential, regardless of their background or financial situations. Your child may be eligible for pupil premium funding if they are currently receiving free school meals, have ever received free school meals or been eligible for this in the last six years, are a looked after child or a previously looked after child. And there is some funding available as well for children whose parents are at work in the armed forces. Schools must provide free school meals to all pupils in reception year one and year two. This is known as universal infant free school meals. However, your child may be eligible for free school meals throughout their whole schooling, and this would trigger the pupil premium grant. If you receive any of the following on the, shown on the screen now, then your child may be eligible for the pupil premium grant. This would mean that they receive free school meals throughout their whole time in primary school. We also provide milk for these children as well every day. The grant is used to enrich and support your child's learning journey at Forest and Sandwich in a variety of ways. We may be able to help fund music tuition. Uh, we can provide one free uniform upon starting school, educational visits, including residential trips, sporting activities. And we also teach all of our children in reception to ride a bike. If you're eligible for this funding, then we can offer this free of charge. Registering is really quick and easy. If you think you qualify, you can apply a line online at the website shown now. Your start-up pack will also include an application form, and if you have any questions, please contact Liz Wakeley in the school office. I'm going to talk to you now about how and why we monitor and track attendance. We have a duty of care for all children. To ensure all pupils reach their full potential, Pupils need to attend school regularly to benefit from their education. Missing out on lessons leaves children vulnerable to falling behind. Children with poor attendance tend to achieve less in both primary and secondary school. We monitor every child's attendance weekly. Attendance above 96% is considered good and this is nationally the average for a child each year. When attendance falls below 95%, we will begin working with families to inform parents of their child's attendance, but to also offer support if needed. If attendance continues to decline and patterns of absence appear, we will contact again and this may result in intervention in the form of regular school attendance meetings with myself, where we put a plan together to ensure attendance improves. Pupils with attendance below 90% are considered persistent absentees, and this is very concerning. We may refer to our educational welfare officer, Vicky Gale, who will likely take over the case and if any referrals to the local authority were needed to be made, she would do it. Local authorities 
have the power to prosecute parents who fail to ensure their child's regular attendance at school. It is a parent's legal duty to ensure their child attends school regularly. We understand that children can become poorly. Please contact the office in good time in the morning if a child is poorly. If you are ever unsure whether, whether your child is well enough to be in school, please contact Mrs Potter in the office who will be able to guide you. Please provide medical evidence to the school where possible so we can authorise absences. Please remember that early morning aches often pass, so don't keep your child at home just in case when they could be in class learning. Every day counts with attendance. If a child misses just one day of school, they can quickly fall behind. Catching up on even a small amount of lost school time can be extremely difficult and it can contribute to anxiety about returning to school. Having good, regular attendance often leads to a child doing well academically, forming better relationships with other children and exhibiting good overall behaviour in school. Good attendance is also not just about children achieving at school. Regular absences whilst a child is young can limit future opportunities and establish bad habits that remain lifelong in their working life. By missing just one day of school a week, a child will stand, stand to miss two years of school over the course of their school life. You can help your child by ensuring they understand the importance of good attendance and getting to school on time. Taking an interest in their education, ask them about their schoolwork, help with homework and encourage them to get involved in school activities. Listening to them when they tell you about problems at school. If there is anything serious, be sure to inform their teacher or head teacher. Arranging appointments and outings outside of school hours, at weekends or during school holidays. If it is unavoidable and your child needs to attend an appointment within school hours, please ensure they are brought into school prior to the appointment, if the appointment is in the afternoon, or after the appointment, if the appointment is in the morning. Hello, my name is Helen Chappell and I'm the SENCO here at Boris and Sandridge School, which is the Special Educational Needs Coordinator. So my role here is to be able to work with parents, class teachers, children, to be able to make sure that we can ensure that children achieve the best that they possibly can. Um, there might be a variety of reasons why I would be involved with working with you and your child. Um, it might be that your child has a diagnosis and so we are working in order to make sure that we have everything that we need to be able to put in place to support them. It might be that you're concerned that your child needs um, some further support and we might refer out uh, to other agencies or other professionals for support. Um, it might just be that your child is having a little bit of a, a tricky time in one particular area, maybe speech and language is a little bit delayed, maybe they're struggling socially um, or with their emotions or maybe they're just finding some aspect of learning difficulty. We get together, we talk about it, we talk about what's happening for the child, what works for them and what else we might be able to do in order to be able to put further support in place. Um, I also support children through different levels of special needs. So we have a range of needs in the school. We will have children that um, are just uh, having support for something like speech and language. It might be that your child is having support and extra intervention in class with their learning. Um, we also have children that have education, health and care plans and need a higher level of support. So my role would be to support uh, you as parents through that process and to be able to make sure that we can do everything that we can in order to put the best support in place for that child. There are also times as well when I meet up with parents, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your child is, is, is identified as having special educational needs, but they might just be finding some aspect of school tricky or challenging or even at home and I'm able to meet up with parents and talk to class teachers and see what we can do to be able to work together to achieve the best possible outcomes for your children. At Forest and Sandridge School we are really fortunate to have two TAs who also work um, as homeschool support. We have Leanne Daesh and Chloe Rolls. They are TAs that work in the school who also offer support to parents for a variety of reasons. This support is confidential, it's non-judgmental, um, it's based around the, the child and it's working alongside parents because we know that you know your children best. There might be a number of reasons why you, why you might want to meet up with Leanne or Chloe 
to discuss concerns around behaviour, either at school or at home, separation, anxiety, any anxiety in your child, difficulties with sleep, if you're a lone parent, or if you just find yourself in a situation that means that you're finding it difficult to juggle the needs of your child based on any situation that you find yourself in. Chloe and Leanne will be able to meet up with you in school, will be able to offer phone call, um, telephone support, and they will be able to talk you through, um, share ideas, they might be able to signpost you for further support, um, or be able to talk you through uh, some other strategies or support that you can put in place. Uh, this support might be something that you ask for or it might be something that you're offered. Uh, but we're really fortunate to have uh, Leanne and Chloe who are able to offer this great support for our families. Hi everybody, my name is Ginny Roberts and I'm early years lead at Boris and Sandridge School and I, warm, I extend a warm welcome to you all. I look forward to meeting you and your children in September and welcome to our school. So I'm going to chat with you about a couple of things, one being the classroom and what that looks like and the other area, the, the curriculum and what we will teach your children. So first of all, the classroom, as you know, Ms. Wilcox has already said that the apple class teacher is Lucy Gale and the cherry class teacher is Amy Dibbon. There are different areas of learning set up in your child's class, such as the writing area, maths area, reading area, role play, listening areas. Our learning will all be based around different themes, which will change each term. We will keep you up to date with these through curriculum newsletters, class dojo and website pages. Examples of different um, topics that we cover would be Rumble in the Jungle or Down on a Farm. The classroom will also be regularly changed to fit with our current theme. There is a cloakroom and toilet located in each of our classrooms. The foundation stage classrooms are set up to have a free flow between them with our wonderful outside area too. In the early years, inside and outside area provision is well balanced and the same opportunities are offered for your child. I'm just going to move on to the curriculum to talk to you about what the curriculum um, looks like in early years. So we have seven main areas of development. We have um, PSED, which is the personal, social, emotional development, like making relationships, self-confidence, self-awareness, managing feelings and behaviour. We then have physical development, which is your moving and handling and health and self-care. Then another area is communication and language, which is listening, attention, understanding and speaking. And then we have specific areas um, like literacy, maths, understanding the world and expressive arts and designs. We also have um, within that um, curriculum characteristics of effective learning. And this is where we think about our children and where, and where they're at um, in what they're doing. So, for example, the first level of characteristics of effective learning would be playing and exploring. So you might imagine your child doing that. So they're playing and finding out stuff, exploring, playing with what they know, being willing to have a go at something. And then we move on to um, the active learning, which is motivation, when they are more involved and concentrating, keeping on trying and having a go at new things and when things don't work to have another go. Enjoying achieving what they set out to do. And the third area of the characteristics of effective learning are creating and thinking critically. Um, having their own ideas, making links, choosing ways to do things. So when you think about your child's learning, you can see how they fit into each of those three categories of characteristics of effective learning. And this is what we're looking at all the time when we assess your child. Um, you'll be given much more information in September about the foundation stage curriculum in a booklet. But there will also be an opportunity for you to attend a meeting supporting your child through the foundation stage at home at some point in the new school year too. But here on this slide, the orange slide, is the areas that you can look at. In the first few weeks of school, we will be making initial baseline assessments of your child using these areas of learning. We understand that children learn at all different stages. They're all in different areas. And some children might be able to write their name when they start school. Some children might be able to count to 10, other children might not, and that's absolutely fine. Um, so please don't panic if you think your child doesn't know enough, it's absolutely fine. And um, we're just looking forward to meeting them in September, and we will 
obviously it's very different this year and we'll just take it as it comes and we will take one day at a time so we'll see you then okay bye bye hello my name is miss gale and i am a reception teacher at forest and sandwich primary school for apple class i'm really looking forward to meeting you all very soon during the year, we'll be collecting evidence of your child's learning and development through Tapestry, which is an online tool used to assess your child against the seven areas of the Early Years Framework. You should be familiar with Tapestry or a similar tool from your preschool settings. You will also be able to add in any learning from home that your child might complete over the year. We also keep a folder of any physical learning that your child completes, such as pictures and writing, these are such a treasure to look back on and your child will be able to keep these at the end of the year. This year, we'll be holding Meet the Teacher sessions at school in September, before your child starts or during the afternoons when the children are not yet in full time. You will be invited in for 10 minute sessions with your child where they will be able to meet their class teacher, explore their classroom, and you will be able to ask any further questions that you might have. Upon beginning school, your child's first few sessions will be very much play-based and supporting them in settling into school life. A reminder that we'll be setting up a class dojo page earlier this year. This will give you the opportunity to contact your class teacher should you have any further questions to ask. Hello, my name is Miss Dibbon and I'm a reception teacher at Forest and Sandry School and I teach in Cherry Class. I can't wait to meet and get to know you all really, really soon. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about settling your child and their start to school. So the first thing that we need to recognise is that starting school is a really big milestone for your child. Um, and we appreciate that you're probably feeling a little bit worried and anxious about their first few days in September, which is completely normal. We always start each child with a staggered start to school. And this helps them to settle in really, really well in a slightly quieter environment. Um, if your child was born from the 1st of September to the 31st of March, they are classed as autumn born. And from the 1st of April to the 31st of August, they are classed as summer born. And you will receive information really soon about when your child will be starting and what sessions they will be in as well. Um, there are a few things that you can do to help your child settle quickly. Um, and feel happy and secure in school. So the first most important thing that you can do is to look as happy and as confident as you possibly can when you drop your child off. Your child will be looking to you for your reaction. Um, so make sure that you are being as happy and as positive as you possibly can be, um, that they, they feel safe and secure with where they're going. So that's really, really important. When you arrive, you can help your child to find their label peg and hang up their things. Um, during your individual visit to the classroom for their meet the teacher sessions, we will show you and your child where these things are so you'll know where to go straight away. Um, over, the few, over the next few weeks, um, we will encourage your child to be come as independent as possible so we'll start asking you to ask your child to put their things up on their peg and then eventually move on to asking you to say goodbye at the door but that won't be a few for a few weeks after they start school so there's nothing to worry about there. Um, when you leave in the mornings aim to have a clean break this means don't linger or come back even if there are tears they there are sometimes tears um, it's completely normal but it very, very often only lasts a couple of minutes and very, very quickly we can settle your child and get on with our day. Um, but if you linger, it makes it far longer and far harder. So please try and leave with a clean break. Um, if we are unable to settle your child, we promise we will ring you. We will let you know um, and we will talk about the next steps of what to do next. If you are worried for any reason, just give the office a call a little bit later on. Um, and we will let you know how your child is and if they are okay. And as I said, if if they haven't settled within the, within you know the first 10, 15 minutes, we will give you a ring and just let you know and see where we need to go from there. Um, remember that starting school can be really, really tiring. Your child is getting to know 
lots of new people, lots of new faces, new names, new boundaries, new routines, a new classroom, everything is new. So it's all very, very tiring. So it's really important that you keep your afternoons when you go home as calm and as quiet as possible. Um, if you if you and your child are doing too much in the week, by the end of the week they are going to completely crash and can be quite emotional. So please make sure that you are being as quiet and as calm as possible when you get home so they are ready for the next day of school. Um, it's really important that you try and encourage your child to be as independent as possible as well. So throughout the summer holidays trying to get them to put on their own coat, put on their own clothes, shoes, socks, go into the toilet on their own, washing their hands on, the, on their own. These are all really important skills for when they start school. Um, it's also essential that you label everything and I mean everything because 30 children with 30 jumpers and trousers and everything that looks very very similar um, it's very difficult to track down the right owner of everything if they're not labelled so please make sure everything is labelled and it's really useful if your child knows their label or recognises their name um, so they can find their own things as well that's always really really useful too. Um, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about snack and lunch time. So during the morning session we always have snack time and this is a snack of fruit and they can have a choice between milk or water. At lunch time you have a choice between a hot lunch and a packed lunch. Hot meals are free throughout reception and key stage one. If you think your child might be elig eligible for the pupil premium grant it's really worth making sure that you've applied for that as it would mean that their hot meal would be free throughout their school life um, and the milk would be free as well. Um, you will receive a menu in your starting pack and you need to book any hot lunches that you would like online and they need to be booked the Wednesday before they are due, um, the week before that they're due to have them. Please make sure you do book in advance because we are unable to give a meal that hasn't been pre-ordered. Um, and you can pick and choose what days you want those meals to be. So if you want a hot meal on a Monday but a pat lunch on a Tuesday, that's absolutely fine. Um, and there's lots of menu options for you to choose from. So lots of things that are really, really lovely. Um, if you choose to have a pat lunch, again, this is absolutely fine. But we do ask for it to be as balanced and as healthy as possible. We are a nut-free school because of severe allergies. So please make sure that there are no products with any traces of nuts in at all. Um, it is also probably a good idea to only provide a very small amount in their first few days. Lots of children find it quite tricky to eat too much and they feel a little bit overwhelmed if there's too much in their lunchbox, especially in their first few days of school. So having a little bit of what you know they like would mean it would be a lot easier for them to at least give it a go at lunchtime. Hello and welcome and hi to all our new parents joining for us in Sandridge and hello to those existing ones with children starting in reception this year. My name's Catherine, probably better known as George's mum. Um, I also happen to be the chair of Forest Friends. Forest Friends is the PTA, the Parent Teacher Association for Forest and Sandridge. Uh, we have an amazing team of volunteers who work tireless to raise funds to enrich your children's learning environment and we'd like to continue to do that. Uh, we are really proud of what we've been able to do over the last few years. Some highlights for those that aren't aware is last year we were able to provide 30 brand new iPads and a charging trolley for the children to use. This year we've already installed a play pod into the playground uh, which every child has the opportunity to use. Uh, we get fantastic support from our local communities as well and if you would like to be involved and help more and continue the great work that's already happening we'd love to hear from you so please do get in touch whether that's be to come to one of our meetings meetings, uh, to attend an event or to help out an event or even just bake us a cake. We'll have uh, accept your help in any shape or form. We'll be grateful to hear from you. Please get in touch at forest.friends at hotmail.co.uk. That's forest.friends at hotmail.co.uk. Um, we're also on Facebook as Forest Friends, so please give us a like and a follow. And we advertise all our events and upcoming events that are happening and our fundraising activities there also. And I look forward to seeing you when we're all back together again.
So we've now come to the end of our information uh, video. I hope you found it useful and informative. Um, and I'm sure several questions have come up. At this point, normally, we would be asking for your questions. We would also be giving you a time, uh, a chance, opportunity to have a look in the classrooms, but obviously we're not able to do that at the moment. Um, we will put some photographs of the classroom on the end of this video just to give you an idea if you've not managed to come and, and have a look around before. But at the moment, obviously, it's empty and it doesn't look like a, an early years classroom, but we can assure you that it will do in September. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, uh, then please direct them to your teacher via Dojo as soon as you've got that set up. So if you make a note of them now, uh, it won't be very long and you'll be getting that information um, from your teacher about how to set that up. Uh, we very much look forward to welcoming you and your child to our, our, our school family um, and hope that you and your child will be very happy in, in your time here. Uh, really look forward to meeting you soon. Sorry we've not been able to meet you now, um, as we would have liked to have done. Um, but hopefully it won't be very long. Uh, take care uh, and we'll look forward to being in touch with you again soon. Bye for now.